Hey guys, welcome back. Today we talk with Haley West. Super excited for you guys to hear this conversation. She is a talented graphic designer here in Nashville who has lived and worked in many places and that has enriched her creative perspective. Haley also opens up about her passion for friendships and connections. It was super inspiring hearing her talk about it. She shared how those relationships, they really fuel her creativity and her drive. We also talk about her roller coaster spiritual and wellness journey. She goes into the health challenges and the revelations that she has had and that's shaped her 20s and the practices that she relies on to maintain balance and wellness. So I know you guys will love this. So keep listening for an inspiring conversation on designing a life that's deeply connected, spiritually enriched and creatively fulfilling. Who was the first person who was like, okay, Haley, You're good at this. Can you make me a graphic? Ooh, I mean, probably back in Mayfair was like a big deal. And Uh I think with the certain celebrity hits we got and like wearing my stuff, that Mm -hmm. was surreal. Like what celebrities? I found them myself, but tell the people. (laughs) We had a little Bella Hadid moment. We had a little Justin Bieber moment. Yeah, we did. I'm loving this right now. Yeah, this is the therapy dog. Um... Addison Ray, So sick. Yeah. Yeah. So like a good group of people. Yeah. But just, yeah, maybe actually I take that back. The most exciting set I think I've ever done was the Language of the Universe collection for Mayfair because okay. that one came at a time where it resonated so hard for me mm-hmm. that I was like, this is my literal baby. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. love that. And so when was that? 20... 20- 21 yeah maybe? that's what I was thinking yeah okay around then I think and you've just been like a rock star ever since oh my god thank you everything you make is really cool thank you so much and I I mean I've seen online like people have even stolen your work which is like a you know weird compliment in and of itself it's flattering really right um it's frustrating and yeah it's frustrating and it's flattery I also just think this day and age there's so much saturation in this market yeah and everybody goes to pinterest and instagram for inspo and when you're looking at the same art recycled and iterations of it i think it's always going to kind of end up a little bit ripped off inevitable yeah a little bit but you you seem pretty original which is why i love your work try yeah i I take that really to heart because i want to always make sure i'm like doing your own authenticity yeah Yeah. because it's like i never want to be the one right ripping people off yeah my biggest fear yeah but there's inspiration everywhere so it's kind of hard to be like how do i zone in yeah yeah sure okay and you've lived in more places than nashville so Mm -hmm. have your experiences living in like those different places have they like influenced your design work at all oh so much i born and raised here but i lived in la for design school okay which funny enough i dropped out of okay (laughs) funny (laughs) enough all the classes were photoshop and illustrator and i was like i don't like it Oh my gosh. And now here we are. Now here you are literally <laughs> using <we> are. those. <laughs> um, and then I lived in Arizona for Mayfair and they, I both, well, how do I, both times I moved out for creative reasons. Mm-hmm. So I think I had that intention going into it Yeah. to like constantly lead with inspiration. Right. So yeah, they both influenced me in LA. I was there when I was 18. So I was fresh out of oh, high school. Oh, little baby. Yeah, I graduated high school June and moved out there in July by okay. myself. I asked my parents to not tell me move. I was like, I'm doing it on my own. Independent. <laughs> Every time I move, I'm like, I'm doing it on my own. Like, don't follow me. Yeah, it's just part of the bit, I guess, at yeah, this point. I get it. And yeah, it's just propelled me. So I feel like I'm not in that like small town, never moved out, never experienced too much. I'm pretty grateful that I've had those opportunities to expand my horizons and meet so many people too. Yeah. That are the best. Yeah. And when did you move back to Nashville? From LA. Yeah. 20, end of 2016. Okay. Um, and that was a divine timing thing. And then was here from 2016 to 2019 and then Arizona mm-hmm. 2019 to 2020. Yeah, I knew yeah. you were gone for a minute. A blip. Because I think I I met you in like 2019. Yeah, we actually met at a Nash, Nash. network event. Uh-huh. It was like the Halloween one or something. Yeah. And I moved the next month. 
Oh my so, gosh. Yeah. I was like, where'd she go? I just run away. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I love to that flee. does seem like your your bit. <laughs> yeah. But I kind of like when it. I'm You're bored. like a mystery girl. <laughs> yeah. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. And then in your, like you have mentioned that you're passionate about you know, friendships and deep connections. That's like yeah. really important. And I know like even on your social media, like I can tell like that's super important to you. Yeah. Um. So how do you, how do like those relationships, the re- like friendships that you have impact your creativity and work? Oh my gosh. Like they're my driving force. Yeah. I would like to say. They're muse. They're yeah, your they muse. They truly are. Yeah. yeah. I um, I'm so grateful for the friends I have and I'm lucky that they're all creative mm-hmm. and they're all very just like fluid with whatever's happening in the season of their life. Yeah. So we're all kind of running in the same pact, mm. um, pact, pack, but we all have a pact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a pack of a pact. Um, but yeah, I, the, the conversations we have and the life experiences we've shared for so many seasons is like so inspiring. I think yeah. that is where I look for my inspiration and qualities of work and ideas is within the connections I have more so than digital stuff these days. Mm -hmm. Um, because I leaned into digital and focusing so hard on work that I abandoned connections for a really long time Mm. that when I lost a big job last year, last year. Yeah. It kind of flipped my perspective of like, what do you have? Oh yeah. Kind of like I put all my eggs in one career basket yeah been there so I lost everything was fully stripped away yeah (laughs) and then got these amazing friends and have amazing friends and yeah like I yeah they're like my driving force truly yeah the reason why I'm alive today so I love that that's so like that's so sweet and I can tell online that that's like the center of your world truly and I'm not doing it for social media either but it's just cute like I like I can just tell when it's not because obviously like people post all kinds of things online like with their friendships and whatever but you can kind of (laughs) just at least for me I'm a big energy reader on technology Mm -hmm. like even better than I am in like real life for some reason I just have this like because like a bs filter is like off because I don't have to read actual people's energy so I can just like feel the, through tech and I'm yeah. like I can tell that it like means a lot to you yeah you know and that's it's just so full of love it. yeah but love. it is funny because everyone like dms us they're like wait this is such a cute idea and which we appreciate because we pull out our phones and take a little content and then yeah. we're back to being present which is so nice that I'm yes. it's not all about content like you're not like making it and like every time you get together it's like oh what do we have to create or like could this be a viral moment or could like we do this to like see yeah yeah I've worked with some of those friend groups before yeah and it's like such a different feeling it's not enjoyable these are my soulmates yeah essentially oh my god I love that so much (laughs) okay well then what advice do you have or would you give to someone looking to cultivate deeper more meaningful friendships I think the biggest thing is Fully remain authentic. Mm -hmm. I think I am, was a really bad person at altering my personality Mm. traits or catering. Yeah. Okay. To appease certain people or groups. Mm -hmm. I can be as weird, as vulnerable, as stupid as I want to be and know that I can always have that full support and I can always feel heard and seen. That goes such a long way. Yeah. Um, and also being really intentional and it's okay to be picky mm-hmm. with your friends. Cause you don't have to be best friends with everybody. Yeah. Um, there's different friendships and connections for different periods and seasons. I think and that's experiences. So, so good. And so knowing what friend fits in what category of that, yep. um, is very helpful because yeah. I can't be vulnerable with everybody, but I have like a solid group. Yeah. Um, you have different vulnerabilities you can share with different people. Yeah. Yeah. And not like making one person your everything. Yeah. Because that can be toxic. Yeah. <laughs> and like it could be heartbreaking because n- nobody can be your everything. No. And so then you're just going to be let down and feeling like that person is disappointing you or that the friendship isn't as close as you thought. Yeah. And like that's a lot of pressure. I know. And I've definitely put that on other people and myself mm. in the past when I had a few people, which by the way, like I think one or two friends, if it is high quality is just as important as having a friend group. Yeah. This is the first time I've really had a friend group. Mm. Um, 
that has a healthy dynamic and like everybody's on the same page. Yeah. But I value my like single friendships just as much. Yeah. I treat them as relationships, honestly. When well, they are. Yeah. They really are. Yeah. I think that's like so important. I, it's something that I've been learning like as and now we are adults and like how does that adult friendships how does it no. actually look and how does it actually work? So I think that's super important. Yeah, especially with all on. the life paths people go through. Like so half true. my friends have babies, half my friends are married. Some of them are single and focused on career. Yeah. So if you know how to navigate all of the different life paths, because yep. it could feel very alienating depending. But Well, if you yeah. try to find somebody who's like perfectly matched in your own your season and your season only, like eventually – you're going to be in a different season or they're going to be in a different season. And it's going to be a rude awakening if you're not mm -hmm. like expecting or if you don't expect anything to change ever. Yeah. Or if you don't have more than like that one person, sometimes it could just get like, it can just be really jarring when things yeah. change. Cause inevitably you're going to be in a different season at some point. Exactly. I saw this TikTok. It was probably a couple of months ago and it kind of went viral. So maybe you've seen it, but she was like, I love, hanging out with people that are cooler than me and not in a sense mm -hmm. of like mm -hmm. it grow cooler, but people who are more aware of worldwide issues mm -hmm. or who are more philanthropic or who have that dream career that they chased after that. Yeah. Everybody's kind of inspiring one another. Yes. hundred percent. Keep expanding the horizons. Yep. And yeah, I'm safe to say, like, I feel like I have that. So yeah, I'm so, like I count my blessings every day about the amazing friends that I have. Oh my gosh, that's so sweet. I yeah, love I, that. I was about to tear up like when we first brought him up. Oh. Like, I genuinely love all my people. Oh my God. So much. That's so sweet. I love that. Okay. Yeah. Well, that that's like inspirational in and of itself to have friendships like that. Yeah. Because people seek that out. Yeah. You know, truly. So, okay. And I want to talk about like some spiritual stuff. Okay. 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 Um, and I know you've described your spiritual and like your wellness journey as a roller coaster. Mm-hmm. So can you share some of the highs and lows that you've experienced? Yes. Um, <laughs> religion, spirituality is obviously, I mean, I think you've seen seasons of me mm -hmm. too, just like of knowing each other. I mean, we've other. known each other since 2019 via like social media and in real life. It's like you get glimpses, but you can kind of yeah. put pieces together. Yeah. Some, but other people haven't really known you. So, yeah. you know, um, fill it out as much as you feel, feel comfortable. <laughs> Because, like, I was raised Christian, mm -hmm. have some trauma. Mm -hmm. Then we went to spirituality post-L.A., which is, okay. like, classic. Like, post-L.A. or, like, like in L.A.? Post-L.A. Oh, okay, post-L.A. Okay. Which was, like, so, like, of course, I came back. And I yeah. <laughs> because I'm spiritual. Um, but that did resonate with me more. I think... Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's I've been thinking about religion and spirituality a lot lately, which is why I said it's a roller coaster because yeah. I think things can be interchanged, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. different yeah. verbiage. Yep. God, the universe, source. Yep. Praying, manifesting. You know, yep. it's just whatever you feel grounded and anchored in. Mm -hmm. Whatever works. language you don't have trauma in. <laughs> <laughs> like that's kind of like how I function, and I think that's what I realized with my therapist a couple months ago, because. I am spiritual. Mm -hmm. It's uncomfortable to say that considering where I live and the connections I have in my life. What makes it uncomfortable? Like how, how you would be perceived as saying you're spiritual? Yes. Okay. And you, and people, and you would assume people would assume what? Like, does, do you think that that would make people <laughs> feel like you're religious or that you're like off your rocker? Off my rocker for okay. sure. Um, but I've experienced so much in both like spirituality and Christianity. I don't mm -hmm. know. Um, but I feel more connected mm -hmm. in this season of life. I don't like to make anything definitive that spirituality source, like yeah. that kind of stuff resonates with me more and it feels more aligned. I think mm -hmm. when I was deep in my Christianity, it was when I was, praying and focusing on other people mm. nearest to me. Okay. So it felt connecting for me to like pray for them, be there like for them. It was communal for, yeah, in a it, way. It wasn't ever for me, okay. it felt yeah, like. Totally. 
So I have a huge disconnect in my mind about that. Okay. So yeah, when I started leaning into spirituality post LA, especially in Arizona, because all of the Mayfair girls, Mm -hmm. well, I don't want to say all that's, we were very like angel numbers. Yeah. Mind you, I was writing horoscopes for Mayfair. Right. That was me writing them. That was so it like, an astrologer. That was me writing so them. So it like led you into that. Per- like you had to dive head deep. Like yeah, head I was first just into naturally that. surrounded by it. Yeah. Um, and I was having deeper connections mm-hmm. and I felt really expanded and I was reading these amazing books and I was like, oh, things are clicking into place. Yeah. And I felt that momentum of, oh, I feel like really seen mm-hmm. and I feel connected to something and that's really nice. So I really leaned into that. Came back here after Arizona. That's when I was like, let's like play around with the like manifestation stuff. Mm-hmm. Got some manifestations. I was like, wait, this is fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, not just because I was getting materialistic things, because I finally felt like I'm pretty powerful yeah. as a human. You like, like that's kind of cool. Got your power back. Yeah. And um, I feel like I gave my a lot of my power away. Not power. Attention and time and energy away. Mm-hmm to who I was praying for and like totally that this felt like it was for me yeah. and that felt nice mm-hmm. which sounds selfish considering religion it's like shouldn't be a selfish thing and yeah to a degree but I think if we're like but working on and bettering ourselves we are making a better world like it's like yeah pour in, like you can't pour out of an empty cup exactly and I feel like I've become a better person to my people, I've shown up as a better friend, mm-hmm. daughter, sister, partner since I've like come home to myself. Yeah. I mean, I'm always coming home to myself and I will until I, you know, the end of it. But <laughs> until you really go home, <laughs> until I <laughs> truly go to home. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like who I am with where I'm at now. That's why it's a roller coaster because it's yeah. been such a journey. Um, and it has been for obviously, you know, for me as well. And for yeah. like all of our listeners, like that's kind of the whole bit. It's exactly. like it's all been this like roller coaster journey. Yeah. And I know we've talked about that too. Like whenever we see each other, we see each other like maybe once or twice a year, which yeah, is so funny. But every it. time we see each other, we kind of talk about the situation. I've also watched you on social media yeah. and same thing. And yeah. heard all the th- so, yeah, I just think it has been like kind of like divine timing. Anytime we've like connected, we're like, yeah. Whoa, like I've recently, like we, it's like we have just gone through like a metamorphosis or like we're about to, usually when I feel like we have just come out of a metamorphosis when we see each other and we're like, and we have so much clarity to where we can have a conversation about it. Yes. And it's such a beautiful one and I value it. And that's the thing too. I love the conversations that I have. Yeah. Just about people's revelations and whatnot. Mm. I don't know. That in and of itself is spiritual. I'm always expanding i always yeah. think of the power of now that yeah. book mm-hmm. love that book love that book yeah and just yeah i don't know so good no i yeah. love that i mean everybody's got the roller coasters that's so I, i'm right there with you yeah I, i'm totally and a lot of our listeners are too so do you have any moments like that you can think of like the pivotal moments or like revelations in your 20s that like shaped your current spiritual beliefs mm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you talked about doing like the tarot or not the tarot, the astrology for Mayfair, but yes. were there are other moments. Um, I feel like I definitely had an ego death mm. two years ago. T- mm. End of 2021. Okay. I just like felt this. Sh- I woke up. This is before... You lost the job? Yes. Okay. I lost the job last year, but this was before I moved into 2022. And I feel like 2022 was my like abundant mm-hmm. okay. year. Um, yeah. I woke up and you know, when you're like, oh, like this is a new timeline like, I'm situation. Not a, <laughs> like, absolutely. Like I a know. frontal lobe developed. Like, I know Wait. that feeling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I felt like higher self Haley is what I always call her. Like yeah. inner being that was outshining the ego okay and now I, was this during your saturn return i don't know how old you are no i don't get my saturn return until so i turned 28 in september okay i don't start it until may 2025 
Well, well it doesn't begin until then or it yeah, doesn't it actually doesn't, return. It doesn't begin until then. My Saturn return begins. Oh, you have a later Saturn return yeah. then. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Which I'm so that's I'm so scared about like <laughs> it feels like an impending deadline. <laughs> <laughs> and I've watched my friends go through it. Yeah. And I'm not excited. <laughs> it's it's a journey. Honestly, it's I in my experience, it was more like it was a lot of shedding, but it was more riveting and exciting than it was scary. Because once you're in something, like you don't even realize like the waves all around. You're just kind of like, just just keep moving forward. Yeah. I think it's scarier looking at it. And you're like, what is to come? Yeah. But once you're in it, you're just, you get stronger in it. Like you just like build up those muscles that. and you're just like, oh, I'm getting used to this. Yeah. I feel like I've done so much shedding the past two years, though. That You're like, like oh, God, what else? Have a break? What else? I, well, yours might look different. It might look different. Yeah, I um, I kind of feel like I'm pre-gaming for it. I love it. Through, like the last year and this year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I remember I woke up that day and I went to get the book The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron, uh -huh. which that actually changed I haven't my read life. it, but I've heard oh amazing my gosh. things. It's a 10-week program that you like do these tasks for creative people yeah changed my life okay Noted. like reprogrammed my belief system all the things okay um that was a really big moment and I can't even tell like pinpoint what exactly yeah changed right I just was like there's like something that opened yes for you? yeah I was like I'm ready to experience things better than I'm used to yeah and I just kind of went with that I love um that. and yeah I mean I've done a lot of shedding and stuff since 2018, really. Yeah. Especially with career. And that is Same. a bruise to me because yeah. I love my career. Yeah. Were you I in something it, different then in 2018? 2018, I was a manager at Justice. Okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, Justice. And then I got my job at Wildflower Cases, which moved into me moving to Arizona for Mayfair. Okay, got it. Um, so s similar vein. Yes. Yeah. When I lost Mayfair, because that was my first big girl job, mm -hmm. first creative job. Yeah. That was a big ouchie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, could not bounce back. Yeah. Um, And so I think that's when I started to lean on my spirituality. And mm -hmm. I was like, that's the one thing I did take from Mayfair. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just... I don't even know. I feel like my 20s have been such a blur. I feel like I've lived 40 decades in one. Yes. Yeah. When I look <laughs> back on my 20s, I'm 30 now. I'll be 31 at the end of August. And when I was trying to reflect on my 20s, like when I first turned 30, I was like, well, what part of my 20s? Because like the first three years, there is a version of me. Mm -hmm. And it kind of went in like threes a little bit. I don't know for sure if it went in Ooh. threes. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know if like right on the dot, but around then it mm -hmm. was like two to three years. There was a season. Then I had two to three years. It was another season. And then I was like going through my Saturn return. Honestly, once I turned 27 and a half, that's what I always say mm -hmm. 27 and a half. I have the same mental patterns. Below that, younger than that, I'm like mm -hmm. different. I'm just a different functioning human being. Like, obviously, I'm the same me that I was when I was four, right? Like, I'm still me, but there are like literal functional, like functional mechanisms yeah. that I think at like 27 and a half, I'm like, okay, I, there's like a split. Okay. For me, at least. And you said you turn, you turn 28 soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're like right there. Yeah. Which is funny because I, uh, I also agree with the mental pattern. Mm. I guess I'm like a little bit past 27 and a half mm -hmm. since starting CBT therapy mm. two years ago. Um, and that is all about reprogramming your mental belief system. Yeah. We have figured out my pattern okay. to a T. That's awesome. And so now I can game plan. Which That's sounds great. bad. It's like you shouldn't game plan emotions, but yeah. Well, I, having a little bit more understanding of them is key. It allows me to be more compassionate with yeah. myself because I think I, as much as I don't like my cycle of emotional mm. 
stuff, it is what it is. Yeah. And you can't really You're not change it. Yeah. I just I tried. I just can't. So a lot of it has to do with like finding the compassion for yourself. Mm-hmm. Got it. Which is very hard for me because yeah. I'm my biggest critic yeah. in every aspect of life. Yeah. But, you know. And you're somebody who wants to, I I can tell and just from our conversation, like you're going to quickly like think about other people before like yourself you like want to just ignore yourself Ooh. like focus on other people yeah you, you found it <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah I could definitely tell that it's like having to just sit with yourself mm-hmm. and be compassionate towards yourself it's like going to be a is a difficult thing yeah for it you is. specifically yes and I think a lot of people can relate to that we just like put our own lives and mental health to the side, not even knowing we're doing that. Mm -hmm. We're like, Oh, but I'm like loving on other people. I'm caring about other people. I'm like working hard at my job. I'm like, but then yet you haven't even like checked in with yourself in like weeks and you're like, really? Hey, um, hello. No, you've nailed it. Self. (laughs) You've yeah. Are you there? Like, hello. Yeah. So I think, yeah, a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah. And I know you talked a lot about, or you've talked about you had health issues Mm -hmm. as well. So how have like those health issues influenced your approach to wellness and spirituality? It has done a full 180. Mm. I think actually we knew each other when it happened, but I went through a phase in 2018, 2019 where I was hospitalized because I got really numb, like numbness and tingling. Mm -hmm. Didn't get any answers that just tore me apart. Cause yeah, I, that's cra- You're like, I don't feel my hands. Yeah, like, and everyone's like, I don't know. I don't know. And I'm like, oh, okay. okay. That's like so, I, right. That's a really assuring thank you. Uh, became a major hypochondriac, which mm-hmm. that's what sent me to CBT therapy, essentially. So not only did it put me into therapy, which has changed my life in so many ways. Yeah. Um. I didn't think I could have alcohol or coffee for three years. Oh, so wow. I like stopped all that. Okay. Um, then back this January was experiencing it collapsed at Soho, <laughs> which was so embarrassing and went to the ER. What was there for a few days? You said that that, that was last year, this year, this year. Okay. Um, the numbness and tingling, I was like feeling it for two weeks. And then finally at Soho, I like fell over yeah oh my gosh and so we went essentially i have that we know of i'm still getting tests run because i'm like a little guinea pig for them at this point okay but hypocalcemia and hypoparathyroidism okay so my body killed my parathyroids which is how your body makes calcium okay so your no- body killed yeah they're like the size of a grain of rice is what you have four of them and thyroid they- um, like, they lay pa- on top of your thyroid. Okay. Those like little parathyroids. Parathy- okay. Parathyroids. Okay. Size of a grain of uncooked rice. Okay. And your body just was like, And my like, body, I Bye. guess, read them as foreign and just <laughs> like knocked them out. I don't know. Oh my gosh. Um, so no calcium in my body. Oh my gosh. Which is, yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah. Okay. So everything had to change after that. Yeah. Like diet everything i still haven't fully updated my life Mm -hmm. because essentially they were like we don't know how this happened unless you had like a traumatic neck injury or happened as a kid Hmm. neither of those were i fit in that category yeah so essentially they want me to like go to ut and be their guinea pig like the students because they cannot figure it out like why it would have happened which is also scary because the head doctor came in. They're like, we just can't figure you out. And I'm like, you that's guys need to literally stop the that. worst. Like, you guys they're like actually, excited by it. And you're like, please stop being excited about like, this is my life. I'm like, this is, we're going on five years here. Like, oh. please wrap this up. Oh my gosh. Um, so that's just like changed. It affected me mentally back in the day. Yeah. Um, of course. It's affected me now mentally and physically. Um, It's put me in therapy. It's adjusted my diet and everything yeah just like so then what is there things you can and can't eat i now have to drink whole milk okay which is like super wait simple, so is that what you have in your coffee is whole milk or oat milk i got oat milk okay i just like miss it i, I miss oat you milk. miss oat milk oh wow i do 
I was because, you know, I was vegan for so long and I had like oat milk and almond milk all the time. And as soon as I stopped being vegan and had regular whole milk, I have not even I've not even glanced back at any of the other milks. Sometimes I'm like, I like the consistency of oat milk. I think yeah. oat milk um, is the tastiest. But I normally all. do whole, whole these milk. days. Yeah. Anything with calcium. And I have to like take medication every day, which is another reason why I want to go to the doctor because I don't like taking medicine. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like it putting anything in my body. Yeah. That I don't exactly know yeah. what it's doing. Right. Um, and that's just my holistic approach. Right. <laughs> like if I could not, that'd be great. Of course. Um, and it would be so much easier if you actually had an answer to this. Things if you weren't just a guinea pig, truly, yeah. because the first doctor was like, "Oh yeah, you're like you must be allergic to caffeine and alcohol." Now they're like, "No, you can have it." Why would they say you're allergic to it? I guess because that shoots your iron levels down. Oh, and so sure. when they thought I came in numb, that it was my iron levels. Oh, I don't know. Was your, how is your iron? Fine, great. Okay, everything's great except for calcium, <laughs> calcium and cortisol. But okay. and that I assume would come from the parathyroid things like not yeah, having I that think more like so stress about it because i put my body through like so much stress for like five years it's a lot of stress yeah it affected my cortisol cycle all of it yeah so yeah that'll just naturally work its way down yeah of course but yeah that somehow like tied into spirituality too because there was a lot of questioning and manifesting that i was fine mm -hmm, i don't know mm -hmm. just i needed something to lean on and to lean into yeah for faith it's, yeah exactly i was gonna say it's like hard when you go through some like when you go through your first like difficult thing outside of like kind of questioning your faith when you go through something hard once you've kind of deconstructed your faith if mm -hmm. you will um it's like you have to figure out kind of quickly what your mind and your like subconscious mind like wants to like go to for hope and exactly. for faith and manifestation and like yeah. okay so like if i'm not doing this whole thing if i'm not believing in this whole thing or parts of it then like what i have you like have to concoct your personal beliefs kind of suddenly yeah you got to figure out that faith or like belief system because i didn't have i lost all my faith in the doctors when they said they don't know yeah you're like thanks for nothing <laughs> my I don't want to say my people were dismissive around me because they were really trying to understand I definitely got to a point where towards the end where I'm like I'm just numb and I was crying all the time yeah. and I told my parents I could tell that they just like didn't know what to didn't say. understand the severity of what I was talking about yeah and that's such an isolating feeling that to is. like doctors don't know family and loved ones are trying to support but are just kind of like oh no like you're just like not like Take a Tums because the first doctor was like, oh, yeah, because Tums is calcium. Oh, <laughs> so like, when I lived out in Arizona, I had a numb day and I ate an entire thing of Tums. Don't ever do that. Oh, <laughs> it actually <laughs> ruins your body. Oh, my gosh. So I like. Yeah. The, so you OD it on Tums. Essentially. Oh, but my everyone's gosh. Everyone's just like, oh, like, just take a Tums. Like, you'll be fine. I'm like, you guys no, like mentally. I feel very lost. Oh my and I, gosh. so I think that's when I was like, I need something. I need something yeah. fast yeah. or else all hope's lost. Yeah. And I'm, and I don't want to get to that point. Yeah. So. No, I, I, I get it. Yeah. I've been there. Wellness is something very important to me now. Yeah. So then like, what are there any types of like routines or like practices that you found that have been helpful in managing your health mm -hmm. and like, and main men, like making your mental health and your, like physical health, like balance. Oh, exists. Yeah. yeah. I love a good meditation. Yeah. I love it. Is there like a specific meditation app, anything that you use? I listen to Joe Dispenza, which okay. I love Joe Dispenza. I do too, but some people don't. Yeah. I think because just his cadence and the way he speaks is kind of oh, scary. Well, I, I, I will <laughs> say I enjoy his work more than his actual meditations. Yeah. But like his like books and stuff. Yeah, becoming supernatural is like one of my favorites. Or like how to change how to change your mind or no, what is it? Um, picture the cover. I literally have it on my nightstand, so um, <laughs> I'm like literally reading it. But yeah, I finished reading it. Him, he's great. I listen to Abraham Hicks every morning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just like a little quick video. So good. 
I love more, my morning pages, which goes back to the artist way by Julia Cameron. Yes. Journaling right. three pages every morning. Mm-hmm. Swear by that. So what do you, what is it that you're like writing? A lot of gratitude. Okay. I always want to lead my day with that. I yeah. feel like if I lead with just like a brain dump of negative things, right. it just kind of sets the tone. Yeah. So a lot of gratitude, a lot of like what I'm looking forward to rewriting thoughts um and then like towards the end if i'm like oh i need to just like get this out of my mind Mm -hmm. so i can have a good day i'll do it Mm -hmm. um i love stretching with my body wake my body up walks pilates has been really good for me recently because it's low impact yeah and it's just fun yeah and i just feel really accomplished when i do it oh that's so fun Um, i haven't done pilates yet i'm really i really want to you should come yeah it's great yeah. It's like a very feminine practice too, I will say. Because totally. it's kind of like, yeah, feminine practice. You're just like kind of, well, you're forced to be like with your body. Yeah. There's you're nowhere like, else for your like mind to go. You're feeling things in places you've never felt before. You're like, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, But yeah, I'm very intentional with my morning routines mm-hmm. and my practices. Mm-hmm. And I, those are so sacred to me because I feel like I would be such a angry person if I didn't do them. Yeah. Yeah. Like... <laughs> They're my saving grace. Yeah. Yeah. That and with your friends. Those yeah. Oh my your gosh. Things. Yeah. I'm a Virgo. I love my routines and I'm a Cancer moon and I love my friends. Aww. So it's like a balance of everything. What's your rising sign? Libra. Libra. Oh. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a nice big three. I'm a Virgo yeah. sun, Capricorn moon, Pisces rising. Ooh. Okay. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I like yours too. Cancer. That's like really like big feeling. Do you? I am like. An ocean of emotion. Oh my god! And then my Virgo's like, "Why are we crying?" It's such a it's that. your Virgo says like, "What?" No, my happening? Virgo and Libra like, "Babes, get it together!" Like, oh. what are we doing here? Moon signs are like huge. Yeah, they're like a big part of who we are. Yeah, which mine is Capricorn Moon, so that's another Earth sign. Yeah, keep Just those emotions know. in check, baby. It's very practical. You're like, you can have it, but then I have within my, its means, and then but then I have Pisces rising. Yeah, and that makes me floaty. And like, would you come off as a Pisces? Which that's what uh, that's what they say is that like you come across as your like rising sign. Yeah, once which you get is, older and kind sense. of heal certain like parts childhood of you, wounds. I think mm-hmm. it's really what it is. It's like going back to our like childhood, their yeah. child self. And yeah, then it's like oh, I see that in you. I don't resonate with Virgos much anymore. I used to. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't really. I never really have, but I'm an, I always say I'm an August Virgo. So it's like different. Oh, okay. I'm a September Virgo. <laughs> like I'm just like more cusp, more like that Leo mm-hmm. Virgo energy versus like September Virgos. Like I have a lot of respect for, but I'm like, I could never be her. Like the organization and the like lists of like how things work and it's not you either. Yeah, I could. I just, I have a lot of respect for that, but. I could never. I'm organized in a very chaotic way. That's how I feel. Like it works in my mind. Like I got piles that I know. Yeah. When other people (laughs) say they're like, I don't think that's functioning. But it it is. is. I made it work. Yeah. For me. So that's what matters. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. I don't know how we got into astrology again, but it's like my favorite. We we like literally started our conversation talking about how she patchouli is a Gemini and she's fucking crazy. So. This is a w- kind of a weird question, but I, okay. I'm curious if any of your like spiritual beliefs, ha- beliefs have influenced your like graphic design work. Um, and like if it has, I'm wondering, like, I want to know. For sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the biggest one would be Language of the Universe collection mm-hmm. uh, that had angel numbers on it, which yeah. that was my shtick back in the day. Yeah. I love to get an angel number. Um, what's your like angel number right now? Like, right now that you're like seeing and that you're like looking for three, three, three. And I always see it with the same person. Oh, what? Which is, I don't even know what three, three, three is actually. Interesting. Usually I'm a two, two, two or an eight, eight, eight. And I used to be a four, four, four. I saw that and I was like, Oh, <laughs> um, interesting. Yeah. It's funny that I said that they twenties come in threes then. Yeah. Hmm. Breakdown in threes. Yeah. Kind of. This situation is such a lesson for me. 
that like I always see it in. So okay, yeah, interesting. Mm-hmm. My my birthday is eight two seven, and I was born at eight twenty seven. Oh, I love so the AM? <laughs> PM. Okay, so those numbers are always sticking out at me just because like it's literally my birthday and birth time so I'm like anytime I see it I don't even know what it I just like it's like a self-love check it's like yeah. we're good we're yeah. aligned like we're here I'm I'm here yeah. like you know what I mean but I love eights which so I have the 888 like too. eight was my favorite birthday I eight made a, was my, your favorite like yeah you were eight years old I made a whole scrapbook about my eighth year of life oh my gosh and it's me to a T like I designed it when I was nine and I like took all the photos of me when Here's I was your graphic eight. design like early no, I know between that and then tumblr back in the day I was always visually that makes sense. designing that makes a lot of sense but okay go back to anyway you did angel numbers yeah we did a whole like aura hand on the back it looked like heat map or love that yeah um that's why I like your stuff like I can tell like it's infused <laughs> thank you I genuinely love designing That's yeah. the, it's just so much fun it's such a process for me and it feels very feminine and just like a flow state so yeah. um you have like a favorite design you've made or like favorite project do i is it always the most recent one <laughs> I, I liked the poppy one that i did mm-hmm. um i didn't know it was going to be used for the whole like pop up <laughs> So it's like very wait it, go into that. Um, I designed the poppy sweatsuit. The, the poppy sweatsuit. Mm-hmm. Okay, this yeah. says futures fresh, and yeah. I didn't know it was gonna be used for like new flavor pop up store for like everything, <laughs> for everything. And I was like, oh my god, that's okay. so cool. Um, and they were just a dream to work with, and I also really I've loved everything I've designed for Mayfair mm-hmm. and Twin Flames. Yeah, those are cool. Yeah. You just like I, love it all, pretty much. I like it because all my clients are honestly different in aesthetics, so I get to just play. And that's all when the you time. know you're talented because like you're not just you don't have like just one niche. And that's nice. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I love yeah, I want to make sure I'm never just like boxed into one. Of course. None yeah. of us want to be boxed. <laughs> never want to be boxed in. Yeah, yeah, you do amazing stuff. Okay. I do want to talk about like how you I mean, we did talk about you moving and living in different places. Like, do you feel like, you know, we talked about the spiritual aspect, like personal growth wise, you do feel like living in different places changed your perspective mm-hmm. on life? Because a lot of people are scared to make that move and like leave. Rightfully so. You know, yeah, for yeah. sure. Like rightfully so. Do you think it was like an important part of your journey? For sure. I yeah. don't think I would even be close. I don't even know the trajectory of what my life would have been if I didn't. And they were different cultures. Like, yeah, you lived in different. It wasn't Holy. like you moved from a different city in the same state. Like you moved completely different states each mm-hmm. time. Like They were completely different. Yeah. They both had really different vibes. Yeah. And they both came with a lot of. Well, three, three places. True. And I lived in Florida for a bit. When I was See, a kid. there you go. So I just pop around. Yeah. Um, and it's like, do you feel like it's made you like who you are? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think it's important to yeah. get out. <laughs> I will say that. I know that sounds cheesy because everyone's like, you should like get out of your hometown. You should. You really should. Even if it's in a small capacity. Yeah. Even if it. you go back, even if you have plans so, to go back, I'm like back. Yeah. Who's to say I'm staying? That's yeah. not my plan. But like <laughs> mystery girl. <laughs> where to next? I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be like, I just want a homestead. Like, yeah. I, yeah. But that's not going to be Tennessee. So. Oh, really? I don't think so. Where do you think it would be? I don't know. Where's it like your dream place? I don't know if I've met the place that I'm meant to be in because. That. that's the up in the air question maybe like montana wyoming okay i want to build like a frank lloyd wright type house out Best. there and i want to have a conversation pit Wait, in my huh? house that's like my only dream oh my and then God. just laugh with all my friends forever just go frolic in my field yeah sounds like a dream that's like literally it but yes yeah, move yeah as much as you can well be like please do it and I, I don't even want to say responsibly because when I moved to Arizona, mm-hmm. I got that apartment site unseen. Okay. Drove across the country. I had to be there in four days and started a job. I got there Sunday night. I started the job Monday. And I was only in that apartment for three months by the time I came back here for COVID. Oh, really. wow. Yeah. Okay. 
in LA. I lived so it in, really was like a blip. It, blip. Yeah. LA was like college, dropped out, moved in with a one bedroom with my friend. She lived in the living room. I lived in the <gasps> master and I had an air mattress. Oh. I couldn't afford furniture. Oh my God. Yeah. And it popped like every two months. So I had to go buy a new one. And then <laughs> the final straw was like, I got into an accident and my car was totaled. So I flew out the next day and moved home. So like, oh, I, wow. I do it. <laughs> Like just abruptly. Like abruptly. you're just kind of like, here I am. I'm a knee jerk. Yeah. Which is funny because again, I'm a Virgo and planner. I'm not. No, like, but I'm the same way. Like people are like, oh, she's way. this now. Oh, she's like doing this. She's in this season we'll now. just never know. It's like, just keeping you on your toes. It like, keeps you me on my you know. toes. I don't even know what's coming next. <laughs> so I just kind of do it. I'm like, actually, yeah. Um, inspired action is a big thing for me, I guess. Yeah. 